Hello, this is Jasmine Trigg and I'm a scientist at Sartorius. Today I'll be discussing a poster previously presented at the American Association of Immunologists Conference. And the poster was titled High Throughput Quantification of Antibody Dependent Phagocytosis Using Live Cell Analysis. Phagocytosis, a specific form of endocytosis, is a critical component of both innate and adaptive immune responses. The uptake and clear, clearance of viable tumour cells can be promoted with monoclonal antibodies via antibody-dependent cellular phagocytosis, also known as ADCP, or through the blockade of don't-eat-me signals, such as CD47. These mechanisms hold immunotherapeutic promise and are studied extensively in drug development. So here we have developed and validated an in vitro assay for the high throughput quantification of phagocytosis using the InkSight live cell analysis system. The InkSight phagocytosis assay combines Frodo for InkSight reagents and integrated image-based fluorescence measurements in a simple mix and read protocol. The data that I'll be showing today exemplify that live cell analysis is a powerful tool for quantitative, morphological and functional assessment of ADCP, and this is amenable to screening for therapeutic candidates. The Incosite live cell analysis system is a fully automated phase contrast and multicolor fluorescent system that resides inside a standard cell culture incubator for optimal cell viability. The system is designed to scan plates and flasks repeatedly over time. In combination with our software, this offers fast, flexible and powerful control for continuous live cell analysis. And this comprises image acquisition, processing and data visualisation. We also offer a suite of reagents and consumables that are non-perturbing. Um, and these are cell labelling and reporting reagents. So phagocytosis is a process by which certain living cells are able to engulf and digest other cells or particles. Frodo reagents for incusite phagocytosis use a pH sensitive conjugated fluorophore that has been incorporated to enable live cell imaging of phagocytic events. The assay principle shown here is based on a low level of fluorescence of Frodo labeled material in media at around pH 7.4 which, following engulfment and phagolysosome formation, results in an increase in the acidic environment. And this leads to an increase in the fluorescence intensity within the cytoplasm of the cell. Using the InkSight live cell analysis system, this increase in fluorescence can be automatically quantified over time with integrated software to segment the areas of high intensity. Additionally, the observed phagocytic signals can be confirmed using the InkSight HD phase contrast images, and these allow for direct visualisation of cell engulfment in real time. For example, in the figure in the right here, Frodo labelled apoptotic jerkat cells were co-cultured with J774A.1 mouse macrophages at a range of target to effector ratios. Phase and fluorescent images at 20x were acquired using the InkSight system, and phagocytosis was quantified using the fluorescent segmentation mask, which is shown in the images here in blue. When we look at the time course, we can see that there's a density dependent increase in red fluorescence following engulfment over the 24 hour time period. Tumor cells can be targeted with pro phagocytic monoclonal antibodies which engage host immune cells and promote engulfment and clearance from the body. One strategy for this is the blockage of don't eat me signals such as CD47. And these are present on the surface of tumor cells and enable evasion of phagocytosis. To investigate these don't eat me signals, Frodo labeled CCRF CEM tumor cells were treated with monoclonal antibodies targeting CD47 or IgG ice type control and they were co-cultured with bone marrow-derived macrophages. If we look at the images here on the left, these are phase and fluorescence images for um, five microgram per mil anti-CD47. And these are acquired using the InkSight live cell analysis system. The images show an increase in fluorescence as the cells were engulfed. A kinetic increase in fluorescence was observed with monoclonal antibody-mediated response being concentration-dependent. To 
eliminate the possibility of anti-CD47 treatment resulting in target cell apoptosis and inducing epicytosis, we also performed phagocytosis and cell health assay. Here, Froda labelled CCRF CEM cells were treated with anti-CD47 or campithecin, which acted as our apoptotic control, and co-cultured with J7748.1 mouse macrophages. We did this in the presence of the Inksci and XM5 dye, and this is a cell health reagent. We found that anti-CD47 treatment induced phagocytosis without inciting apoptosis. To investigate phagocytosis of viable tumour cells via antibody-dependent cellular phagocytosis, we assessed two clinical monoclonal antibodies targeted against CD20. So these were rituximab and trituximab, which is a rituximab biosimilar. And these are both approved treatments for CD20 positive B cell cancers. Frodo labelled Ramos target cells at a um, range of densities from 100 to 12.5k per well were treated with anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies rituximab or truxima or an IgG1 isotype control. And then they were co-cultured with bone marrow derived macrophages. If we look at the time course on the left here, this shows that truxima induced um, ADCP response is both time and target cell density dependent. The results in the middle show an increase in fluorescence for truxima and rituximab compared to IgG control at all of the target cell densities that we studied. Lastly, rituximab treatment showed a concentration-dependent increase in ADCP using the um, target cell density of 50k cells per well. We also assessed the effects of anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies in inducing phagocytosis using primary macrophages as the effector cells. Monocytes isolated from whole blood were differentiated into macrophages using cytokines. Frodo labelled Ramos cells were treated with monoclonal antibodies targeting anti-CD20. Again, here we use rituximab or truxima or IgG isotype control and co-cultured these with the primary uh, macrophages that we've differentiated. So the macrophage differentiation itself was monitored and quantified using the um, integrated software of the Inksight Advanced Label Free Classification Analysis. And we can see the images of the classification masks here. So on the left, we have images of the classification masks for monocytes, uh, which was on day zero with a pink outline. And the right hand image shows macrophages um, with a blue classification um, mask outline on day seven. Looking at the time course kinetic data, this shows that rituximab and truxima induced ADCP in a concentration dependent manner, with similar kinetic profiles being observed over the four hour time period. Next, we investigated some native and engineered rituximab FC mutants. Frodo labelled Ramos cells were treated with native and engineered human rituximab isotypes and CD20 IgG1 and CD20 IgG1 foot, which is a non fucosylated FC mutant, and anti CD20 IgG1 NQ, which is a non glycosylated FC mutant. And they were co cultured with bone marrow derived macrophages with a 1 to 2.5k effect to target ratio. If we look at the microplate graph on the left here, this shows the kinetic response for total red object area over four hours. We observed concentration dependent ADCP response for anti-CD20 IgG1 monoclonal antibody and the FC mutated IgG1 foot, but not for the IgG1 NQ or IgG control. And the EC50 values for these were shown in the table here. These results align with previously observed effector functions. Additionally, we studied ADCP using adherent target cells that had varying HER2 antigen expression profiles. So ADCP was examined using HER2 positive AU565 or HER2 low MDA adherent target cells. Cells were labelled with Frodo, um, then treated with an anti-HER2 monoclonal antibody and co-cultured with bone marrow-derived macrophages. 
we look at the images, um, anti-HER2 induced an increase in fluorescence for AU565 cells, but little to no fluorescence was observed for MGA MB23 cells. The time course uh, shows an ADCP response for AU565 cells and reveals that this occurs in a time and concentration dependent manner. Anti-HER2 induced ADCP for AU565 cells, but not for the MDA cells. And this is consistent with established correlations between HER2 expression and um, ADCP response. So to conclude, the Frodo reagents for Incosite in combination with the Incosite live cell analysis system provides an image-based fluorescent solution for visualisation and quantification of phagocytosis. Our experimental findings demonstrate antibody-mediated cellular phagocytosis across a range of effector and target cell types, and they substantiate the recognised prophagocytic effects of monoclonal antibodies such as anti-CD47, anti-CD20 and also anti-HER2. Taken together, these data exemplify that live cell analysis is a powerful tool for quantitative, morphological and functional assessment of ADCP, which is amenable to screening for therapeutic candidates. Thank you.